Are you new to nibs? Do you fancy a fountain pen but don't really know where to start? Certainly don't want to break the bank in doing so? Well, I hope the next few minutes as I scribble through half a dozen of our current brand leaders will uh, give you a little bit of an insight and persuade you to take the plunge. There's hundreds out there, but this six um, have come from Jespers of Harrogate, who I, I want to give thanks to my old company uh, for supplying the pens for today. Look them up, they're a great retailer, lots of friendly advice and options for people um, experienced in pens or maybe just dipping the toe in the ink for the first time. So enjoy, thanks. So these are the entry level pens I'm gonna show you today. Um, we've got the Parker Vector, we've got the Schaefer Pop, the Schaefer VFM, the Lamy Safari, the Kaweco Classic Sport, and the Cross Bailey Light. All of them under £20, and the Parker is particularly good value, probably eight to 10 pounds on the high street at the moment. So uh, let's get them inked up and uh, see how we get on. First up is the Parker Vector cartridge pen. This has been around since the mid 80s and it's the least expensive option we're looking at today. Fine and medium nibs, slim steel shell along on the front section here and a plastic barrel and cap assembly. It's quite a nice contemporary looking pen really. Um, and my recommendation with all the pens if possible is to post the cap, that means putting the cap on the back of the barrel there because otherwise they have a habit of rolling and if it rolls off the desk you bend your nib. I've supplied hundreds of these over the years to primary schools where, where the children have earned their handwriting license and uh, this has been their cherished first pen. Let's see what it's like. The nib is quite a durable one. It's not got a lot of flex because it's quite small and stubby but on the paper it's firm but the ink flow is generally quite good. That's the Parker Vector. Next up is the Schaefer Pop. This is a, a good contrast to the Vector um, because it's quite a chunky pen as you can see. Uh, again, contemporary design. Schaefer have made this with a fine medium nib option. Uh, we're looking at all mediums today by the way. This design is fairly recent, last two or three years, and it's cartridge only. It takes Schaefer's very own design. Again, like the Parker one, readily available. A little bit more robust than the Parker perhaps, but again, it's double the price. This one is just under 20 pounds. Let's see how it feels. There's quite a few different colors available as well in the barrels and the caps. Um, it is a chunkier pen, even for a small hand, this little rubberized shell is very comfortable um, and it writes quite nicely. It's a little bit more free-flowing than the Parker, although still reasonably dry and you can hear it on the paper, which I quite like anyway. So that is the Schaefer Pop. Next up is the Schaefer VFM, standing for value for money perhaps. This is different to the pop in the way that the design has been created. It's a little bit more business-like and streamlined and a little bit more traditional. Open style nib. There is quite a little step between the barrel and the shell here, which some people may be bothered by, but uh, in, in general terms it's not bad at all. And the cartridge is an international size cartridge, not the Schaefer one. Uh, and these international cartridges are available in a huge range of colours, so uh, that might be something to consider. The design's about 9 or 10 years old, fine and medium nibs only, and uh, let's see how it feels on the paper. quite dry really, a little bit finer than the pop, which suits some, not others, but on the whole, still a reasonable pen. I think that looks good in the pocket, yeah? 
reputably the world's best-selling fountain pen, this is the Lamy Safari. And uh, for many, many years it seems to be the go-to first pen choice for many. Great range of colours available and a good range of nibs available rather than just fine and medium. So the, the Safari range offers a really good flexible um, solution to choosing your first pens. They also do limited editions. This is the 2020 range in Mango, Violet and Aquamarine. They bring a, a range of colours out every year. Very collectible. So, the Safari. It takes a cartridge or it has a fountain pen filler as well. The little T10 cartridges are of a good capacity and available worldwide. And the nib, this is the one of the benefits, they go from extra fine right through to uh, like a calligraphy stub nib as well, which um, your local retailer, if they've got the Lamy range, will probably have a good range of nibs for you to, uh, to, to pop into the, to the pen and try. So let's see what it's like. This shell here is shaped so it's comfortable to hold. Uh, young hands or first timers, it just helps you uh, align the nib nicely on the paper as well because with a fountain pen, if you're too, too much to one side, you don't get a good flow. So when both points of the nib are on the paper, you get a nice ink flow. The nib's quite contemporary in its design, but quite long, and so you do get that flex which uh, allows you to um, feel the paper and just makes the experience, for me, a little bit better. Great options, contemporary design, good strong clip, and some fun colours. That's the Lamy Safari. Let's go small and quirky with the Kaweco Classic Sport. This design has been around since the 1930s and Kaweco have been making pens in Germany since the 1880s. Initially, in the 30s, this was described as a pen for ladies, officers and sports people. Um, but it's a design that still stacks up well today. Uh, and if you progress on to the um, metal finished pens, like my beloved Brass Sport here, um, I've used this around the world and it's never deposited ink in my pocket, so it is a proper pocket pen. Nibs, extra fine, fine and medium for the classics and for the uh, frosted and the skyline, which are the other plastic ranges, so there's a huge diverse range of, of, of colours and finishes available in this. But for the metal pens, like the brass or the aluminium or the steel that they do, there are screwing nib options going up to um, a stub italic, so broads, double broads and stub. So there's a, 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 if you like the feel of this, if you own one of these and like the feel of this, there are more options for you uh, if you uh, upgrade to one of the metals. Because it's so small, the cap has to be posted really. Um, it's a little bit too tiny to use without. So posted cap, it becomes a pen that's not too or far off being a normal sized pen. Uh, it's reliable, we've got a couple of these kicking around the house for shopping lists and, and what have you and uh, they are good starters so every time we go to pick it up, generally works. Hopefully it'll not prove me wrong this time. Here we go. It's quite a small nib but traditional design. It is quite flexible as well so very pleasing. So that is the quirky and very small Kaweco Sport. Kaweco do do other pens as a good starter. They do one called the Perkio, which is about £12 um, as opposed to just under £20. Uh, I haven't reviewed that today, but you can see that um, it's also quite a nice, inexpensive pen. So if you're in store, something like that might be worth a look at as well. So we come to the last of our six. This is the Cross Bailey Light. This pen was introduced uh, in 2019 as an entry level version of the original Cross Bailey, which is a metal and lacquer pen which retails at about £55. But Cross have got a, a winner here really for a lot of people because it looks and feels like a, a, a more traditional pen rather than quirky or design led. This is um, just a nice design uh, and has a nice feel about it. Again, traditional open steel nib extra fine fine and medium nib options and it's well worth a look. Pink's maybe not for me, sorry coral, but the teal, blue or grey um, look equally smart anyway. Lifetime guarantee on cross products as well. 
takes the cross cartridge but also fills from a bottle if you um, invest in the extra uh, uh, com converter that would fit in here. On paper, let's see how it works. Well, the flow's okay. It's quite firm, but not unpleasant. So that is the Cross Bailey light. So to a verdict, we've looked at six of the brand leaders and um, it's difficult really to, to, to advise as to which is the best. All I can do is give you my own uh, experience of each of the pens and uh, it's up to you to make your own mind up really because what I might like, you might not. So uh, don't please don't take my word, word as uh, gospel. All six are different styles and different feels and they all started well first time really so once I put the cartridge in after just a few seconds the ink flowed, no problems there. So which are my favourites? Well for the options and the um, reputation I think the Lamy Safari is probably a really good pen to consider. If you like um, quirkiness and reliability then the pocket pen, the Kaweco Sport, might be the one for you. And, and if you like traditional style and feel of a pen, then the Cross Bailey Light is certainly a really good contender. However, if you ask me tomorrow the same questions, which would I prefer, I'd probably give you different answers and change my mind. <laughs> I hope it all helps anyway, and for under £20, I hope you can see that you can dip your toe into the uh, fountain pen uh, market. Um, in one respect it's like disappearing down the rabbit hole because once fountain pens get hold of you and once you enjoy using them and they get under your skin then you will be spending more money on them I'm sure. I love them all really and I hope you've enjoyed what I've had to say and uh, thank you very much indeed for watching and we'll see you all soon.